Hello, I'm Sister Vasa, greeting you live from Vienna in Austria. We have an unusual program for you today. We will be showing you my interview with the famous Georgian journalist Daniel Galadze, yes, the Galadze who won the Pulitzer Prize for his coverage of the situation in Jerusalem. The famous Galadze visited our studio a couple of weeks ago after we agreed to give him this exclusive interview about our award-winning show. We are airing this today because we can't produce our usual program, because of the tragic circumstances. Now, those of you who live in Austria have already heard about this from the local news. But in case you haven't heard yet, I'll just tell you briefly that Anka and baby Francis have been kidnapped by the man who calls himself Dr. Silkworth. I don't know all the details yet, and it all happened so quickly, but, you know, Silkworth was heading out with Anka and the baby for a walk in the park, and as they got out the front door, Silkworth pulled a gun, pulled my driver out of my car, ordered Anka into the car, and drove off. Then Emilios, who happened to be across the street and saw all this happening, jumped on his motorcycle and is pursuing them now. Yes, I know, it's crazy. And the police have told me since that Silkworth is desperate because they've been observing him and they were closing in on him because they've long suspected him to be linked to this whole series of high-profile art thefts, both in London and here in Vienna. So when I found this out, I got a phone call from Silkworth, who's, you know, running away, and he told me, using Anka's cell phone, by the way, that if the police don't let him leave the country, he will hurt both mother and child. I know, it's very disturbing. The police tell me now that they have even established that Silkworth is none other than the notorious Black Glove. Yes, and I, I'm sure you've heard of him, the talented thief who always leaves one black glove at the scene of a crime. In any event, I have to go right now because I have to go to the police station for more questioning. Meanwhile, some of the crew will show you this interview. I hope you like it. And please uh, pray that all go well. I hope that if all goes well, I will see you next week. Goodbye for now. I'm Daniel Galadze, and I'm here in Vienna, Austria, having my coffee with Sister Vasa Larin at the studio of the YouTube show, Co YouTube sensation, Coffee with Sister Vasa. Tell me, Sister Vasa, what inspired you, a liturgical scholar, to make a program like this? Oh. Thank you. Let's say such a popular, unscholarly program. Well, Daniel, first of all, I found myself in a predicament of many church scholars who work in a theological or church related field. My academic work was rarely read by anybody outside the academic world, outside the very narrow circle of liturgical scholars, and I wanted to share this work with the broader community of believers. I also wanted to use the resource of the internet, where most people now spend a large part of their time, because there we find an overabundance of information, a lot of which is very negative and ultimately divisive. Especially in the area of church politics, you know, the internet offers many reasons to become cynical about church life, or even life in general. So in our program, I focus on a type of church news if you will, that focuses on the heart of what is actually going on in church life, or what is going on in the church calendar. The message of this type of focus is, let's get back to the basics, to the heart of our tradition, to Christ and his message, rather than get caught up in church politics. I use some humor because I find it is an effective antidote to cynicism. You know, this cynicism that creeps into our church communities, thanks to 
our overdose on information about all sorts of politics. Some people say it's not humble for none to have a show on YouTube. What do you say to that? Oh, thank you. I have to think about that one, Daniel. You know, when my spiritual father, Archbishop Mark of Berlin and Germany, sent me to get a theological education and then to teach at Vienna University, sharing my studies with other people became my job. I wasn't blessed to study liturgy for my own intellectual enjoyment, but to be of service to other people, to share with those who don't have the time to study these things. If I didn't do that as effectively as possible, I think I wouldn't be humble, I would just be lazy. Could you tell me more about these people who work with you, your crew? I don't want to offend anyone, but they don't look like theologians. Don't worry, they aren't easily offended. Most of the members of my crew are recovering drug addicts who previously lived on the streets. Not all of them, and I can't mention which ones, of course, to maintain their anonymity. I offered them work here, and I'm very grateful that they joined the show. I wasn't sure it was a good idea at first, you know, but I've been pleasantly surprised by their input. Well, sometimes I'm unpleasantly surprised. But I must say I learn a lot from my crew. You know, Daniel, people who have known total powerlessness, the kind that comes from active addiction, and then get on the path of recovery, such people know what the grace of God is. Because no human power can restore someone from the grips of addiction. These people come to believe and ask for help in daily prayer because their lives depend on it. Not because they grew up in a certain tradition, even though some of them did grow up in church-going families. But it's not for any other reason other than they, they have their faith as their lifeline. They know from experience what the word salvation means. And you know, one of the definitions of the word salvation is recovery. They don't take this for granted. So in this sense, they are very fortunate because for many people, even those who go to church regularly, faith might not be a real daily experience, something that makes a real difference in their lives. We sometimes associate faith and theology with black robes or long skirts, but you know, we forget that Christ hung out with the sinners, the outcasts, people like fishermen, and he discusses the heights of theology with people like the Samaritan woman, a promiscuous woman, while he continuously has only harsh words for the religious establishment, the Pharisees. Anyway, I think that's enough about my crew. Daniel? Very interesting. Uh, thank you, Sister Vasa. I just have one last question for you. Could you tell us about your audience? Is it young people? How many views do you get on your YouTube channel? Well, if you're asking about views and not viewers, I would say right now we have over 140,000 views on our channel. That's called Coffee with Sister Vasa. That's 32 videos, 141,000, about that much views on that channel. But per video, we get about an average of 4,000 viewers per video. Sometimes there's fewer, sometimes there's uh, more view viewers per video. Now, most of our viewers are between the ages of 25 and 55, with slightly more men watching than women. Our show is not aimed specifically at very young people, because I think our church does have more catechetical instruction available for children than it does for adults. So our focus is more on an adult audience. I should mention that there is 
an excellent program on YouTube for children and young people. It's called Be the Bee, and it's done by the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese in the United States. And I would highly recommend that for children and young people. So yeah, look, look for Be the Bee on YouTube. That's about it. But those are the statistics I have about our show today. Thank you very much, Sister Vasa. That concludes our interview. I'm Daniel Galadza. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone.